Hey, this is Jason. And this is Travis, and we're the QBs on Wheels. Got a special show for you uh, this evening. Um, we're going to do our pit sixes tomorrow night uh, after the game tonight. However, um, we wanted to hit you with a few pieces of breaking news after Sunday's game and a couple of highlight reels from Sunday. Uh, let's jump right in with Mason Rudolph. Holy hell. That was a hell of a hit. Yeah, it was ridiculous. Mason oh. Rudolph got uh, hit hard um, to the bottom of his face mask and knocked out cold. Um, we're actually going to cut away and show you a picture um, of this. So um, check this out. And it's not for the screamish. Yeah, it's nasty. Was finished before the contact with the ground occurred. All right, thank you, Gene. Third and 11 here for the Steelers. Rush coming. Rudolph tries to tuck and run. Gets out of the first wave. Throws on the move. It's complete as he hits James Washington. Mason Rudolph keeps it alive, but Rudolph is down. Well, he's down and he is out. Uh, there is serious concern right now for Mason Rudolph. Rudolph avoided the sack and then got crunched and went down in a heap. Got hit from the behind by Carr and appeared in front by is it Jefferson. No, nope. Thomas. Thomas. Yep. Yeah, that was nasty. Um, Earl Thomas, I mean, he might have been able to uh, maybe give him a little different, but Earl Thomas isn't the type of guy that intentionally tries to hurt somebody, so I don't think he should be suspended or fined. He probably will get a fine, but I don't think he should be suspended. Uh, what do you think? The, the NFL um, official word is he will not face suspension. They, they still can find him, but they have not uh, determined whether or not he will be fined yet. Um, he was interviewed by the press, and he said, I, he felt really bad. He said, I'm so sorry. And he said, I was, I was praying for the guy and his family when I heard that they took him to the hospital. Um, yes. And you know, he said, I would never hurt someone intentionally. And, and it seemed really uh, sincere. Um, so I, I tend to believe him. I'm hoping that the NFL, I think they probably are going to find him um, more as a slap on the wrist because they can't not find a guy that knocks somebody cold. But um, clearly it was, he had no intention of actually injuring uh, Rudolph. So I, I think that the NFL will hopefully go lightly on him because it's still football. Yeah, you're going to get hit. I think there is a bigger issue, and I think this should definitely be fined. And that was that the Pittsburgh Steelers, uh, their cart malfunction. They couldn't get the, their uh, uh, cart running to get him off the field. So two players helped him do his feet, and he staggered off the field under his own power. Now, you and I know a little something about spinal cord injuries, and we know that definitely should not have happened. If, they had, if the cart wouldn't go, so be it. You bring out a backboard, you strap him down, you secure his neck, and you carry him off the field, and he can give the thumbs up, to all the fans, to let them know that he's not hurt too bad, but you have to be cautious. Yeah, because bef before you know if it's actual spinal injury or not, the littlest movement could completely paralyze him. That's right. That's right. There was a, I had a, a good friend of mine. He hit his head in the bottom of a swimming pool, and his drunk ass friends got him up and walked him in and plopped him on the couch and left him there until morning when they realized he hadn't moved at all until morning. Um, and 
it was a situation that he was able to walk from the swimming pool to the couch, but that was because the 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 swelling hadn't started on his spinal cord. Yeah, once that um, once that swelling starts. That's right. Yeah. So it's it's a situation where um even if he said, Yeah, guys, I'm fine, I don't feel any pain, that's usually a really bad sign. Yeah. You know, he should be in a lot of pain. He should not have ever been walked off the field. I hope the NFL goes after the Pittsburgh Steelers and their training crew because that was inexcusable in my opinion. Yeah, I I agree. I feel like they should go after the Pittsburgh Steelers because even if he did say he was okay, he was knocked out. He don't know what the hell he's saying. That's exactly right. I mean, he, he, they took him to the hospital. If this guy wasn't good enough to stay in the stadium, he sure as hell wasn't healthy enough to walk off the field. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, um, I hate to well, say it, wanna, but, but... They want to fine or suspend anybody it should be Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, absolutely. And the training staff. I mean, I, that was that was pretty disgusting. Yeah. And I put blame on any individual. That was an organizational... Somebody in that organization should have had a protocol in place yeah. for caring for those players. For sure. All right. Rant over on to our next bit of news. Um, so, you called it a few weeks ago. You said uh, Jay Gruden would be losing his job soon. Yep. Nailed it. Yep. He, uh, about that. After six years, uh, the, rest, uh, the Redskins head coach, John, uh, Gruden, has been fired. They're an 0 and 5 start. It wasn't pretty. Um, yeah, I kind of, I kind of figured it was gonna, it was gonna come, and it finally did. Um, he just, I don't know, I don't know what, what happened, but he just, he wasn't putting it together for the last couple of years, and they're never contenders in their division. Yeah, and and if you look at, um, I guess the, the two questions is why did it take him six years to figure this out? Mm-hmm. They haven't been a contender for a while, but. In the early stages of that, they went. They had a lot of quarterback problems. Uh, you know, RG three turned out to be an RG zero, and um, Kirk Cousins played, you know, relatively well. He was in development, and then they sent him to to Minnesota, um, where he was by the way doing very well. Um, they had injuries. They had Alex Smith, who was injured. He's been out now for more than a year. Um, his career is likely over. Uh, technically, he's still on IR, um, but he's been on injury reserve since early in 2018. Um, so I think that they gave Jay Gruden the benefit of the doubt because of their quarterbacks. Um, but yeah, 0 and 5, um, three quarterbacks that all of them are reasonably decent players. Um, you know, Hastings is a high draft pick. Case Keenum, is, his actual stats and his play capability has not been the best, but definitely not an 0 and 5 start. Um, I think they could. Colt McCoy is one of the better backups. So. I think they kept Jay Gruden on so long is because they wanted to see if uh, John Gruden would give many pointers. <laughs> right, right. And once John but, Gruden got the Raiders coaching job, he's like, well, now you're on your own, and look what happened. He gets fired. <laughs> yeah, they, they called John and said, dude, it's your DNA. He says, that's the dumb brother in my family. <laughs> no, but um, – And uh, I'm hoping that I read it wrong, but I don't think I did, and I'm hoping it's not true. But as an Atlanta Falcons fan, I actually read an article today that if Dan Quinn gets uh, canned, which Arthur Blank, Arthur Blank, the owner of the Falcons, said that he's not worried about Dan, Dan Quinn yet. But they said John Gruden would be a candidate to take over the Falcons, and I do not want that to happen as a Falcons fan. So. Yeah, I don't know. I think um, I think with his performance overall in Washington, I, I would I would hope it would be pretty hard for him to get a a head coaching job, I think that he could go back to college coaching yeah. or could uh, 
work as a an assistant coach in the NFL. But um, I think it would be a mistake for Atlanta or anybody to put him in charge at this point. Yeah, me too. Um, that's just my my two cents worth. Uh, uh, the, I also called the next thing we're about to talk about too. You did, and actually, I, you called it, but I I was on board with your thoughts. Um, neither of us picked for our pick six the Kansas City Chiefs, and. They've been a favorite of ours. Patrick Mahomes is brilliant. Um, I'm going to show you a clip now just of one play because it really uh, exemplifies Pat Mahomes' brilliance. Uh, so here we go. This is the one play where, uh, well, just watch. Third down and 18. Flushed out again, all the way back. Turning the corner, fires downfield, caught, touchdown. Only Mahomes, Byron Pringle. So, um, Travis, uh, how, how do you draw that play up on the chalkboard? You hire Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> I, I guess, I guess. Yeah, it's it's called you draw a bunch of little circles and a bunch of little X's and you're like Pat just just take the ball and do whatever you want. I don't care. Yeah, that yeah, was that but that shows you what you're up against when you're when you are uh up against Pat Mahomes. However the Colts did show us how we they could beat him though. That's right, that's right. We learned something and and I uh have done a detailed analysis on how you have to work in order to be Pat Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, step one, beat them on the ground on both sides of the ball. The Colts got 180 rushing yards and they held the uh, Chiefs to 36 rushing yards. So they played great uh, defense when it came to, to slowing the rush. And they kept pounding it, kept pounding it. They never had a big lead. They never were in a position where they, they had to stop thinking about passing. They just kept pounding the ball. That brings me to step number two. The best way to beat Patrick Mahomes is to put him on the sidelines. The Colts had a time of possession, 37 minutes and 15 seconds. How do you do that? You run the ball a lot and you use the clock. Every second that Patrick Mahomes is on the sideline is a win for your team. And then the last thing is that I thought honestly was brilliant Nobody really likes to watch fewer goals. Come on, they're kind of boring. Let's face it. However, the Colts had four fewer goals. All of them were inside the 32-yard uh, distance. 33 yards, by the way, is the distance of the current point after attempt because they wanted to make it a little bit harder. So it was literally less than for PATs to get their 12 points. Yep. Um, that was critical because they were close enough. At any time, they could have said, hell with it. We want to put this game away. We want to go for it on fourth down. All we need is a first down, and then we can throw a touchdown. But they didn't. They were conservative when they were within scoring range, and they made sure they got the points on the board. They scored 12 of their 19 points on field goals. All of them were in positions where they're at or near the red zone. So that's the way you beat them. And if the Colts can do it using that formula, there are other talented teams out there with better defenses than the Colts and better offenses than the Colts. And all of a sudden, I hate to say it, but 
the Kansas City Chiefs are no longer the best team in the AFC. No one has figured out how to beat the Patriots yet. So I have to say that, that Kansas City is the second best team in the AFC. But if you saw that clip, they were still brilliant. All I know is the Colts coaching was on point. Because like you just said, when they were in scoring range, they didn't take risk. But at the end of the game, when they were they, – they couldn't score a field goal, they went on fourth and one a couple times and got it to run out the clock. So that coaching, it was just, it was just brilliant. Right. And the other thing, too, is their coach is Frank Wright. Frank Wright is, without a doubt, in my opinion, the single best per- perpetual backup quarterback in history. This guy played as a QB in the NFL – for 16 years and was almost always the second string quarterback. You know, he backed up Jim Kelly. He played in Super Bowls. And he has learned to be patient, to play a role. To, you know, he was never the most talented guy on the field, but he was there all the time and very dependable for a decade and a half in the NFL. And now as a coach, yep. that maturity shows. Yep. So we uh, we said that the Steelers coaching staff and training staff messed up, but the Colts, they did everything right to beat Patrick Mahomes and them Kansas City Chiefs. So yep. hats off to uh, the Indianapolis Colts. And, and I got to say, if, if I'm voting right now for coach of the year, Frank Wright's in my top five. Oh, yeah, definitely. definitely. Uh, Jay Gruden, number 32. Yeah, by far. And I think I think everybody agrees with that, too. Right, right. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow night after Monday Night Football. Uh, I'm looking forward to this game. This is a dramatically improved um, 49ers and facing a dramatically improved uh, Cleveland Browns. So uh, this is not a gimme by any stretch for the Niners, even though they are, as of now, still undefeated. Yep. All right, guys. Mañana. Peace.